Hello and welcome to The Rabid Atheist. I'm Ed Raby, a former pastor turned atheist, now compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. If you want to learn how to support the channel's mission to normalize atheism and deconversion, stay tuned to the end of the video. Today I am responding to a video of William Lane Craig reacting to what I believe is a YouTube short by Jordan Peterson, which revolves around the idea that people are driven to atheism by church hurt. It's a common idea I get hit with from theists who come to my channel and make the assumption that I am an atheist because of some sort of butthurt I experienced which, uh, in, inside the church, which led me to atheism. So the way WLC's video is set up, uh, he is listening to Jordan Peterson's thoughts on the subject and then has his own viewpoints, which he presents later. So let's take it away, JP and uh, William Lane Craig, and let's see what you got. I've read a lot of comments from atheists in my YouTube comment sections on my biblical lectures. Yeah, I imagine you did. I couldn't get 10 minutes into the first one where I felt I could have written several paragraphs about the problem at that point. Fact is, Mr. Peterson, you don't have a degree in Bible or theology, and it shows in those lectures. I'm quite sure that several theist Bible scholars had some cringe moments, and not just me. But this is just the opening statement, am I right, and not the subject at hand, so let's continue. I probably read at least hundreds of them, and maybe thousands of them, but at least hundreds. Well, impressive numbers. And you know what? I'm going to just take your word for it, simply because I think it is likely that it could have happened. But in any case, any generalization you make the atheist could be tainted by several factors. But the main one, I think, is what is the kind of atheist that would comment on a Jordan Peterson video? And that's the real question. And one of the things that has struck me continually is that many of the people who become atheists are reaction, are reactionary. And I don't mean that in a denigrating sense. A huge proportion of people who are stridently atheistic were hurt very badly by people who purported to be religious when they were young. And I think that also applies to Dawkins, by the way. Uh, I've seen some, some evidence for that in his public utterances. Now, I don't know about Dawkins either, but he seems to have developed a very early disdain for religion because he felt it was irrational and not based in reality. Whether or not that was due to his experiences within the church is irrelevant because we don't evaluate a person's arguments on whether or not they became butthurt or not, but rather on whether their arguments are sound and have good evidence to back them up. Your anecdotal experiences and observations, Jordan Peterson, don't really matter to me because I have med read many polls about why atheists say they become atheists. While some would say they became atheists due to experiences in the church, the majority say it is because they read the Bible and had problems with it in some way. A quick search on Google with the question, why do atheists say they became atheists, gets the following four AI-generated results. Lack of evidence for God. Two, conflict with science. Three, the role religion plays in society. And four, atheism is the more reasonable position to take. You could also throw in the problem of evil and other arguments against the existence of God, which also show up in the same search. What you don't see when you ask that question of any search engine or atheists themselves is that atheism had, these people had bad personal experience with religious figures or the church. At least it doesn't come up very often. So the problem I have at this point, JP, is your observation is simply based on looking at comments on your videos and not actually asking any of the atheists why they became atheists. So you come to this conclusion, and I could level a charge that uh, you are motivated to see this because it's kind of been your pattern throughout your entire career. And, a and saying a large group, a huge proportion, as you say it, according to this observation. Uh, I could also say that what is correlation does not actually equal causation here. It's quite possible that atheists have very rational reasons for not believing that is the cause of their unbelief, but also have been hurt by the church as well. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the church butt hurt is necessarily the cause of their atheism. It just might go hand in hand. And so... You have people who've been terribly betrayed by what by the agents of what was supposed to be the best. And so they carry that utter bitterness with them, that ultimate betrayal. Because I think there isn't anything worse in some sense than being betrayed by people who claim to be acting, let's say, in Christ's name. 
I mean, how could anything be worse than that? I suppose that's a valid point, but it doesn't follow that this is the reason for their atheism in the first place, or that they don't have any good rational reasons to reject theism. Betrayal is something I've experienced several times before I was an atheist, and it never caused me to think about becoming an atheist. Quite the contrary, suffering for the cause of Christ is something I lived with in my first two churches, as far as Mars said. It helped me keep my faith. Once again, I don't think that betrayal by the church is the cause, but it might correlate in some way, but not in the way you think. But let's save that for later. And so then they're driven to this atheism, and they're so afraid then again to reestablish a new faith because they've been hurt so badly. What? How do you know that, JP? You don't know what's on their minds as to why they don't reestablish faith. One, you haven't asked them, but you're rather going on an assumption based on your comment section. I don't care if you are an expert in human psychology. That is an assumption that should be verified before you say it You know, by talking to them. I know it's an, it isn't an emotional blockage for me. It's more of, nope. No matter what angle you look at it, the claims of theists and Christians still look like complete and utter bullshit. I imagine that the reasons that why people stay away from the faith are much the same as why they left. Lack of evidence, lack of scientific support, and all the rest. That they're willing to suffer this purgatorial drought of vision rather than to put themselves up on the chopping block one more time. That's some fancy pants word salad you got there, son. So you're insinuating that religion gives vision, which I would say it causes blindness and wishful thinking, uh, and that these people would rather have a drought of vision in their life because of the pain they have experienced rather than go through that pain again. In short, the only reason they became an atheist, according to you, and stay atheists is because of their bad experiences and they fear it would happen again. Now you got all that from engaging the reading of your comments, which is far from a scientific study. I'm going to call poison in the well at this point. You didn't genuinely interact with them. As far as you can tell, you don't even admit that you even talked to them. And you just assumed that this butthurt was what it was. You know, they, you look at the typical quote-unquote angry atheist, and there's a few of them, and you suddenly move from these very specific atheists you had to deal with and apply it to all atheists. You know, that's going from a specific to a generalization you know, and that's almost as bad as the other way around. This is allows you to do what you do, JP, which is ignore atheist arguments altogether. You did this recently in your interview with Pints of Aquinas when he asked you what the best argument, atheist argument was, and you waffled, and then gave a final answer that had nothing to do with atheism. Because you have poisoned the well in your own mind as what an atheist has to be, you don't genuinely feel you have to interact with them, do you? You're basically saying, it doesn't matter what the atheist says is the reason they left and stay away from the faith. They're just butthurt from religious people, and that's the real reason. It allows you to do what you've been doing personally for your entire career, not taking anything atheists ser say seriously because of your preconceived bias. Well, let's see how William Lane Craig reacts to all this. <laughs> Man, having this come from a professional psychologist is so impressive. Well, I'm not impressed by someone who has always had this poisoning the well tactic every time atheists are involved in the conversation. He never listens to them, as far as I can tell. He just works with the assumption he has about atheists being what is true rather than talk and listen to them. That's not being a good psychologist professionally, by the way. It's a very bad psychologist that assumes what his patient needs without ever seeing them at all or listening to them. He's like a doctor who, without even seeing or listening to the patient or even examining or doing any kind of test, writes a prescription or recommends a procedure. Sorry, William Lane Craig, I'm, I am not impressed by someone who is poisoning the well against me, and that is what JP has done here. Because it really does confirm, I think, the impression of all of us, of these internet atheists, their bitterness, the anger, uh, the emotional tirades that come from them show that this is not a matter of a dispassionate intellectual quest, even though they love to pose in that way. So you're going to grab that vial of poison too, uh, William Lane Craig? You do realize this is kind of funny to me, that you are negatively putting down people who don't believe for some emotional reason and not good intellectual ones. 
when you're the one who said that the epistemological bar should be lowered for Christianity because what matters is the feeling of the witness of the Holy Spirit. In short, you're keeping the faith for emotional reasons and not intellectual ones, and you openly have admitted so. But it's okay when you're when you do it, but not the atheist. Here's the thing. Just because people are motivated to certain positions does not mean that they cannot also have good rational reasons for those positions as well. These are two separate issues. This is a false dichotomy that you and JP have been pulling out for years. A person can be both emotionally hurt and still have good reasons for not believing what a religion is saying. It's not one or the other. Personally, I think it's your own way to cope with the rise of atheism, in my opinion. It's hand-waving because you can just dismiss it as an emotional reaction and thus justify not really questioning atheists about what their reasons for leaving and staying away from the faith are. You don't have to engage them if you dehumanize them into being you know, like a certain Russian author dehumanizes his own characters, who are fictional characters and not true representations of atheism. Or you can just say that they're butthurt, people too afraid to try again. Thus, you can relegate them to an emotional subhuman who is not really thinking. This is an emotionally driven reaction. And many of them, I think Peterson's quite right, have had negative experiences in the church as children or teenagers and are now in severe rebellion to it. I am sorry a lot of YouTube atheists are older like me. Some have never been in the church at all. You are basically continuing to poison the well at this point, and I'm now pretty sure you're not accurately describing the demographic of atheists, because most studies on atheists say that it's hard to pin down a lot of what they go through or any of their demographics. Uh, and it's really tragic. But of course, you see, here's the thing. If you say to people, well, the reason I reject Christianity is emotional because I've been hurt or I've been wounded, that doesn't make you look good. But if you have intellectual objections to Christianity, if you can pose as the dispassionate, academic, careful inquirer who's so rational, you know, rationality rules, what? then you earn self-respect and credibility in the eyes of your audience. Believers often believe for very emotional reasons. Does that mean that they're not good reasons that are rational for believing, according to apologists out there? They certainly think that there's good rational reasons, despite the emotional attachment that many believers have to their faith. Even if what you say is true, and wasn't, in my opinion, more poison than well, that wouldn't mean that the rational reasons for rejecting faith would not be sound or factual. I mean, you're basically saying that one cannot be rational about atheism, just emotional. And that's a false dichotomy. It remains poisoning the well because you're just saying you can't trust what them atheists say because they're deceiving others and themselves. That's why they're really atheists. It's ad hominem through and through. And so I think there's an awful lot of posturing going on that is betrayed by the emotional undertone that Jordan Peterson so accurately depicts. No, it's not accurate. He's expressing an opinion based on observation of some comments. Hardly a desire for scientific accuracy or even looking up why atheists say that they're atheists, given that it's also basically fallacious, poisoning the well, and ad hominem from both of you. I would say that this is more for your benefit to hand weigh atheism away uh, than any actual good observation of why atheists leave the faith and stay away. You can keep lowering that epistemological bar in defense of Christianity and God belief because you can always claim emotional BS as the reason why someone is an atheist. They can't have good arguments because atheism is just an emotional reaction. Atheists are just deceiving themselves, so there's no way that they can tell the truth. So what do you do with me? See, here's the thing about my story. Um, I didn't leave faith because of any butt hurt. I was actually in a pretty good place in my ministry. I was ministering in my last church, and I didn't have anything going on within the church. I was probably a little frustrated that we weren't making some headway as usual. But I had been examining the claims of Christianity for years. Okay, uh, by the time I hit congregational days, you know, I, I had the ability to examine all the claims of Christianity in light of evidence, in light of whether there were good reasoning, or all the rest of it. And I had been doing that for literally decades before I even sat down privately to myself. But then I finally had the opportunity to look at these things and 
eventually I came to the position that Christianity was false and there was really no truth to it as far as a belief system. And then a year later, I discarded belief in God altogether. There was no emotional crisis during any of that. Okay, In fact, things were pretty good for me. I didn't experience any emotional trauma or butthurt from the church until after I left the faith, until after I left my church. Then it was kind of rough in how I was uh, ceremoni unceremoniously dismissed to the door and kicked out, pretty much. And nobody really even bothered to ask me to come and defend myself. And that was after, two years after I'd become an atheist. So I don't really think you can use this whole argument on me. Um, and this is something that I have to bring up. The one thing neither you nor Jordan Peterson even think to ask is, did this emotional butt hurt happen before or after the person deconverted from Christianity or became an atheist? It's something you guys don't even bother to ask. Is the atheist angry because of how they were treated before their deconversion, or are they, treated, are they angry about it because of how they were treated after? This is a very valid question that neither one of you bothers to even think to ask. You both have poisoned your, your mind so much about what atheism actually is that you don't even bother to engage it anymore. This video is about a year old, but I don't think either one of you have changed. And given recent interviews by Jordan Peterson, I'm fairly certain he hasn't either. The whole point is, to both of you, you just dismiss atheism with a hand wave, and you don't even bother to listen. And you've been doing that in large part for a large part of your careers. And it doesn't work for me, though. Okay, I became an atheist because of good intellectual reasons and didn't experience any butt hurt from the church until after I made some really bad life decisions and then ended up, you know, being unceremoniously booted from the church. Two years after I made my deconversion, you know, it's not something that I'm very proud of, but the idea that I was experiencing some sort of emotional butt hurt that led to my atheism is just simply not true. It was an honest, genuine intellectual you know, look at the at the issues presented by my religion and later by the God belief itself. So this doesn't work for me. So what's my real problem with this video as somebody who runs a channel that's trying to normalize atheism and deconversion? I really get sick of the poison in the well on this one. And you two are very influential figures in Christianity. And a lot of people take your viewpoint because you take that viewpoint. But bottom line, it's poisoning the well propaganda. It's designed to get the believer to think negatively as soon as they meet an atheist. Oh, this poor atheist, they've experienced some sort of emotional butt hurt. So I don't have to take anything that they see seriously about the intellectual problems with Christianity or Islam or any of that stuff. I can just dismiss it because they don't really have any good reasons. They're just emotionally butt hurt about it. You're reinforcing a false dichotomy, poisoning the well against atheists, and you're not really taking anything very seriously about what they have to say. And that's just dehumanizing. You're basically looking down at them and dehumanizing them and making them less than human simply because they don't believe as you do. And that, my friend, is wrong and bigoted, okay? It's very prejudicial, and it needs to stop. And so, yes, I'm going to come out and say something. But I also have to ask the theists in the room at this point, do you really think that that's going to be an effective method of reaching the atheists for Jesus? Coming up to them and saying, you know, you don't really have any good reasons to be an atheist. You're really just butt hurt, And, you know, you really believe in God. And, you know, it, you, you just deny him and your unbelief. And you just, do you really think that that's going to work if you spend a majority of your time just basically insulting them? You know, it's not good, genuine looking at the issue without having a good conversation. It's really reinforcing a lot of theists' belief that they can just hand wave the atheist aside. And it's good propaganda, and it's appealing to their emotions about, oh, yeah, I, I have good reasons for my faith, and those atheists don't. And it's like, I don't know, it's kind of crap, you know, not that atheists have faith, but. It's just like, what in the hell? You know, what the hell? Um, I don't know. You know, off script a little bit. I just, this propaganda that continues, I wouldn't mind it so much, but these are pretty, two, two people that look are looked to as influencers 
of Christianity and how they view atheists is often, you know, people just follow that. And it would be nice if apologists like William Lane Craig and people like Jordan Peterson would actually, you know, maybe I should sit down and listen to these people and just instead of going uh, with my uh, assumptions, you know, Peterson has this view that atheists, you know, are going to be evil, you know, have no morals and things like that based on fictional characters, you know, in a Russian book, you know, and so it's like that's his whole shtick and has been for a long time. He brought that up, I think, with when he debated Matt Dillahunty or, or Jordan or uh, Sam Harris. He brought that up and it was like, no, bro, those are fictional characters. Why don't you deal with reality, what the real atheist is? I mean, if in your mind you can just shift the atheist to this fictional character that they should be, you're going to be able to dismiss them. And that's very dehumanizing. And I don't think that's right. And from an atheist standpoint, it shows the depths that these people will go to to propagandize against an atheist in order so that they don't really have to genuinely deal with the arguments. They don't have to genuinely deal with the reasons. They can just say, uh, it, you know, they can do what Jordan Peterson did in his interview with Pines Aquinas. Oh, that's just a non-starter. I don't, you know, it's just, it, I, there is no good argument for atheism. <laughs> you know, it's like, and then come up with some BS argument that doesn't even have anything relationship to do with atheism. It's just a philosophical position. I'm going to get to that video probably next week, but it's like, what the hell, dude? You know, it's like he has done this his entire career because of his own poisoned mind about what atheists are. He, he won't even hear anything else. His prejudice against atheism is very, very pronounced, and he just doesn't want to. He doesn't want to get off of it. And you know, this video was a year ago, but I don't think he's changed his attitude or mindset about it. And maybe he never will. But you know, somebody has to say something. And I know a lot of other people have already reacted to this video, but I I felt that it was needed because I've been getting it a lot. You know, you never really were a, a Christian, and you're you're just left the faith. You know. I even literally got somebody to write that, I think, a few weeks ago. Well, who hurt you that you're an atheist now? And it's like, no, dude, you, you, that's a very prejudicial statement. I'm not going to let you get away with that. So, yeah, I guess we'll have to leave it there. And you know, But tell me what you think in the comments about uh, JP and William Lane Craig's uh, observations about atheists. Uh, I, I really like to hear some of my atheist brothers and sisters chime in about this one because it ought to be very, very interesting. Um, but, you know, as always, you know, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate every like, share, and subscribe. If you want to support the channel in a more tangible way, you know, leave a super thanks or, you know, a super chat or some sort of super sticker. I always appreciate those uh, direct donations. I also have my PayPal link in the description if you want to donate to the channel that way. Uh, if you want to really support the channel, though, what I appreciate the most is those of you that become members. It only takes... Uh, $2 to become a member of the Rabid Nation, so, uh, you know, and there's other levels, but, you know, you're more than welcome uh, to do that, and that gives me the monthly support that you know, really uh, allows me to continue doing what I do without worrying so much about the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate that very much. And as always, live your best life. You only get one go around, and then it's over. There is no afterlife, so you want to be taking all your time, money, and opportunities to... Um, build up yourself, uh, your relationships with the people you love and care for, and to make this a better world. And don't waste them on the trappings of religion and faith because that's a dead end. I speak from experience. And as always, thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you next time.